My name is Steve Grody. Uh, I am the co <laughs> Hello, my name is Steve Grody. I co-curated this exhibition at the Pasadena Museum of California Art called Street Cred, Graffiti Art from Concrete to Canvas. The thrust of the exhibit is very specifically about the graffiti artists in LA that have deliberately evolved a body of work for the gallery setting. So they're not just taking their street art, sticking it on a border canvas and, and sticking a gallery. These are people that have taken their work more seriously uh, in terms of a career. In this first section, it's the mix of people that have worked with the Plaka letters, the Cholo writing. The first person really to see the pure artistic beauty of Cholo letters was Chaz Bajorquez. Beautiful use of these letter forms. This is an A for the Avenues area of the Northeast uh, Los Angeles and uh, Locos, Somos Locos, we are the crazies. But even if somebody can't read it, the pure beauty of the abstract strokes is, is clearly evident. Somebody who has also kind of come from that tradition, but with brush, we have Retina, and who's developed a very personal font style. Alex Kizu reflects the Japanese aspects of his background with the clock of lettering, which is at a very, very high level of sophistication. Over here, we have Revoke, uh, where he's using letter forms, but in a very compositionally sophisticated way, um, as opposed to kind of a more straightforward graffiti fashion. A very different way of working is by Sinner. And here he's working with symbols and social commentary that mean a lot to him. Mal means bad in Spanish, and then there's a green background, so there's a reference to drug dealing. There's also this really interestingly done cutesy figure, but yet there are the three dots referring to La Vida Loca, which is gang life. So for him, he's working with a very symbolically based kind of, kind of approach. Juan Carlos Munoz Hernandez, his work is very distinctive because there's the formal color aspect of what's coming, what's, what's coming forward, what's receding against these lines that indicate that something should be read as flat and other times as dimensional. So it's an interesting way that he's working with a counterpoint of kind of visual tension in different ways. To push, you can see, just focusing on his uh, wall work, he doesn't obey the rules of traditional graffiti that here's the fill and here's the outline and here's the 3D. In his uh, abstract work here, it's interesting because it's, you can see a similar color sense and yet there's still this calligraphic aspect of field but it's fractured in a very sophisticated way in terms of how, where he's emphasizing the lines and how he's breaking up the, the, the plane. Uh, from the abstract work, the opposite end of that is figurative work what they would call character work. Here we have Michael Alvarez. It's a painting based on a bad photograph. Can't even see the face because the flash is too bright. Uh, the reflection in an animal's eyes, there's even an artifact of this face over here. Again, emphasizing bad photography. He creates a kind of spooky, creepy world, and I mean that only in a good way. Greg Crayola Simpkins is highly renowned in the uh, pop surrealist scene. And his technique is extraordinary, very labor intensive, and he creates these um, wonderfully whimsical worlds. Now, Sabre likes to work in what he calls uh, hyper-realist fashion. This is a uh, last stop. The theme is clearly about the person in what is now their home. Very carefully rendered scribes by Sabre and shout outs to crewmates are on the glass of the background. So you can take the scene um, out of graffiti, but you can't take the, the, graffiti, the graffiti writer out of the scene. Jesse Simon comes from an early generation of uh, graffiti writers and he's interesting because he's making sculptural pieces out of the broken shards of surfboards. He ends up uh, fabricating them, constructing them, and sculpting them into these beautiful forms. This last piece is by um, Tony Tempt Kwan, 
and you can see that it says sculpturally tempt. Uh, he is suffering from ALS, so this was designed by him using an iWriter computer program using the movement of his eyes to compose this. It's a very strong piece designed under very difficult circumstances. The reason that this is uh, an important exhibition to happen is because all of these people in the show have worked very, very hard to develop their skills and their artistic identity, their sense of aesthetics. You have to go out there in the world and make a great effort and be dedicated and not let early failures dissuade you from what your passion is. And that has been the case with all these people here.